Hello and welcome to the Crimson Stitchery. My name is Anushka and you can find me elsewhere online as a sour telling, that's my username on Ravelry where we have a Ravelry group. And welcome to my video channel. Um, hello to any new viewers. So in this week's video we're getting a little bit up close and personal into my Crimson Corner, <laughs> as so many of you love to call this. And I'm going to be talking about why I don't do haul videos. Now what sparked off this little um, video idea was that I ordered some yarn online and it arrived in the post vacuum packed. <laughs> How cool is that? So that was a way for them to reduce postage because they could send it as a letter and not as a parcel. Um, it's a shame that it's obviously plastic because that's um, quite a lot of packaging that had it been sent in a paper envelope I guess it, it could have been recyclable but in my experience, quite a lot of knitting and craft mail is sent wrapped in plastic, so in many ways this was no different. And I was really excited because I'm anticipating a little trip away soon, and I absolutely love to knit socks while I'm travelling. On train journeys, on car trips, I've got a couple of socks in my good old knitting basket here. So I was really excited to share this with you guys, and then I thought, actually, it's kind of a rule of thumb on my Crimson Stitchery knitting podcast um, episodes that I don't talk about things that I've bought. I don't do haul videos. I don't talk about purchases or acquisitions or things that I've picked up, which by the way, I find a really bizarre turn of phrase because, you know, half the time I'm talking about things that people have given to me or that I have purchased with my own money. You know, I didn't, I didn't pick it up. It's kind of like saying that you've picked something up negates the fact that it's an economic transaction, which is, it, it, it's weird. It, it's weird and it kind of hides that. But anyway, um, getting back to the point, I don't talk about purchases and accumulation just for the sake of it which left me at somewhat of an impasse and I've decided to respond by um, <laughs> filming this video talking about why I don't do haul videos as a basic rule of thumb for the Crimson Stitchery. By the way, um, not to be a hypocrite or, any or anything, <laughs> but I'm really, really excited about this. So I can't, I'm not gonna tell you where I bought it because um, that's kind of not the point, but flat packing yarn for travel, so clever. And then I can stick it into my hand luggage and it will, um, and I can open it up when, when I need to use it and then it, it will puff out. I'm, I'm so enamored with this. But anyway, putting that aside. Okay, so, I've got to say that I enjoy watching a good haul video or acquisition section on a knitting podcast as much as the next person. Not too much, but I enjoy it. Why? It's really fun, okay? It's really fun to see what people have bought. It allows me a little taste of what they've bought when I don't have the means to indulge in that myself. Also, it's really great to hear their opinions on the products. It's great to have that review and build up my own knowledge base and just learn a little bit more for the future so that I can make an informed decision when I'm able to. When I decided to start the Crimson Stitchery back in February 2019, I thought quite a lot about the existing format of craft and specifically knitting or sewing podcasts or regular vlogs or talk shows as they exist on YouTube. And you know, there's basic things like the show and tell, the finished object, talking about process, maybe detailing it up on technique. Um, and there's a really, really, really strong focus on conspicuous consumption. What do I mean by conspicuous consumption? I mean, well, consumption, purchasing and buying things and talking about it as a means to address um, your own economic worth or just the very concept of um, purchasing and consumerism as a way of validation, you know, belonging in a community, feeling of self-wealth, feeling good. Um, I'm talking about retail therapy, but it kind of, it gets to a point where it's not just about the materials, but it feels a little bit like purchasing for the sake of it. Hence the acronym, Sable, stash acquisition beyond life expectancy. Stash acquisition beyond life expectancy. Um, by stash, we mean our hoard of craft materials. So it's like, you know, at a certain point, you are never going to have the time to um, make all of this stuff. And you're buying, because it's quicker to buy, 
basically. It's quicker to buy and it's, it's fun to look at materials and imagine what they can be um, to the point where that pleasure is, is a joy of itself and almost transcends the act of making. So I would like to emphasise that I am not here to judge anyone. I'm really not. I'm just talking about my own thoughts and my way of life. And the reason that I'm addressing this specifically is that I find that in the well of knitting and craft, a certain level of affluence is always projected. And what I mean by that is that you have to have quite a lot of disposable income in order to continue purchasing. You also have to have a large enough home with storage in order to keep all of that purchasing around you and kind of display it. Um, now, I would also like to say that I'm not talking about, you know, gifts or samples or people who acquire materials for a living, like if you're going to be a yarn retailer or, or a knit designer or a pattern cutter or, you know, you know what I mean? Um, I'm talking about the fact that when this level of, you know, consumption is constantly displayed online and it doesn't get questioned, it doesn't get questioned, it just kind of becomes the norm. So the norm feels like when you're talking about online cultures of craft, the norm feels like you are a person of a very high level of disposable income and or a very large amount of leisure time so you know you're not working because you don't need to um, and people that don't fit within those categories can feel very very excluded. Now I'm not saying that that is the case for everybody and again I'm talking about my own personal feelings and I'm talking about inclusivity and reaching out to people who don't fit within those kind of projected ideals. Which brings me back to my format of the Crimson Stitchery, which is that I talk about materials that I'm using and I'm quite explicit about them in that I have got stuff in my yarn stash that I have had for over a decade, over a decade. I have got fabric in my fabric stash that is older than me because I got it from ex-hoarders or relatives that were clearing out. My pet hate is hoarding. I live in a tiny apartment. What I'm trying to say is that everybody should be able to enjoy their craft projects no matter how much it costs them and also that doing the craft that you're enjoying is way more important than buying things. Connecting with other makers is much more important than how much you've spent on a project. I believe that really, really strongly. And this is the kind of culture of making that I've been trying to foster around my YouTube channel and my Ravelry group, The Crimson Stitchery, over the past few months. The reason that I feel so kind of on the fence and ambiguous, if you like, about cool videos is that as great as it is to know about new products, what's coming up on the market, I do find that there's this big focus on what's new. It's always about what's up and coming, the latest thing, the most recent cast on and so on and so forth. And there's much less emphasis on wear and use. So how do you know how well something is holding, is holding up? Um, I've seen video podcasters hold up a pair of socks that they've worn once and be like, oh, I'm so sorry that this looks really gross, I've worn them. I don't think that wearing a pair of socks once means that you shouldn't show them online. Actually, I think it means that you should show them online. You've got so much more to say about how the yarn reacts, what the what the fibre does when, it, when there's abrasion, um, does it have elasticity, does it have memory, um, what happens when the dye fades, does it break down, does it change colour, how are you going to mend it? Um, where have you worn it? How often did you wear it? How did it actually feel on your body with other clothes? Honestly, when we wear garments, we make them come alive. And it's so much more than, and then in my opinion, they've served their purpose and also they're serving their purpose in the present rather than kind of existing as beautifully twisted up hanks of sock yarn that are just kind of hanging around in the background of videos. Um, awaiting their purpose. So the kind of constant excitement around what's new and shiny means that we're kind of feeding this big soap bubble um, of, of objects and then craft materials just become inanimate objects of, 
of themselves because they haven't been transformed. So I'm gonna wrap this up now. Thanks so much for listening to me. And as always, I would love to know what you think. Do you enjoy a good haul video? Have you been tempted to join in? What do you think about my opinion about how I talk about materials, um, accumulation, consumption, and use on my video channel? Just to quickly reiterate, not trying to judge anyone. Everybody can do what they want. My aim with this video was to present my viewpoint because I feel like it's one that isn't really shown very regularly online and I think it's more than valid and I also think that there are probably other people like me. <laughs> At least I hope so. <laughs> so if you've enjoyed this video um, please leave me a comment, I'd love to know what you think and do subscribe to The Crimson Stitchery for more videos coming every Tuesday. Thanks for watching, bye bye!